bringing you all the news and highlights from the Auto Expo 2016, everything that there is to know about cars and the bikes. So do remember to tune in. Catch all the action on the Auto Car Show on ET Now. The government. To begin with, I would like to invite Mr. Rishi Kapoor, Sector Head, Times Conferences Limited, for the opening remarks. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all to the third annual edition of the Economic Times Regality Convention. It gives me an immense pleasure to be in the midst of company of visionaries and leaders who are instrumental in shaping the landscape of our country. The Economic Times Regality Convention is a power-packed four-city summit. that will deal with all relevant issues that are prevalent in today's context opinion leaders in real estate and the ancillary services would deliberate on the benefits of the cutting edge technologies out of the box real estate solutions and the issues that need attention while we have experts speaking on the current issues we at economic times will also be recognizing some of the real estate firms today for the contribution towards the growth of the sector for it is you who are shaping the places that defines a life whether it's at office at homes or any other place we sincerely hope the round of discussions are insightful enough and it will add real time value back to the industry i would like to take this opportunity to specially recognize hindwear who believed in our vision and aspiration for uh, the community and collaborated with us for the initiative Now I would like to request the experts to take the discussion forward. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, I would like to invite Mr. Sandeep Samani for delivering the welcome remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and welcome to 2016's second gathering of the ET Reality Summit. We live in a golden age of technology-enabled world. If on one hand there are voices of worry that technology is the, making the human hand redundant, we cannot let ourselves forget the opportunities it is generating technology is creating many 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 more jobs it is giving us greater choice levels of convenience and sustainability healthcare agriculture clean water transportation and education are ripe for radical positive changes as technology solves the world's biggest problems india and china are seen among the most active markets outside the us for real estate technology investment some of the biggest near term opportunities include property management listing services research both into uh, consumers as well as into materials focus on technology stress on green features and excellent design options are the new parameters of tomorrow they will bring in the positive changes will encourage innovation generate industrial growth deliver customer satisfaction and help companies differentiate themselves in an extremely competitive market as industry leaders we all agree that technology adds value to development we agree it has become another component of a larger lifestyle package so irrespective of sales strategy premium housing commercial space or mass housing introduction of technology into people's dwellings and lives is the way forward this is what consumers want this is what the climate wants this is what all business should want to grow further Have a great evening. I'm sure we'll have a very interesting set of discussions from both the panels. Thank you very much. Our guest of honor today is Shri Mati Bhadra B, former Deputy Mayor, Kochi Municipal Corporation. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, may I please invite Shri Mati Bhadra B to now address the gathering. At the outset, let me thank the Economic Times for inviting me to be part of the Economic Times Realty Convention. The real estate sector is one of the fastest growing industry in the country and Indian real estate is as dynamic and forward looking as the reality markets in anywhere else in the world. There are quite a lot of challenges that the industry face and certainly government policies are one such. As I understand, as I wish, the governments central, state and local governments realize that true the true potential of uh, reality sectors and now have started treating them more like growth triggers and economic boosters the smart city mission project initialized by the government is going to be a big boost up for the real estate market smart cities are going to be smart spaces 
within the existing cities with all modern infrastructure facilities, perfect sewage system, drainage system, water supply system, waste management system, transportation system, power distribution system, well-designed habitation system are going to be the primary basis of this smart city component. Let me conclude by appealing to the reality sector and the state to look into the needs of the lower middle class housing requirements as well. Cost effective houses and housing complexes is the need of the hour. I'm sure you will seriously look into the segment. And uh, I'm also sure that all the deliberations, discussions that is going to happen today uh, will result in the concrete uh, suggestions. And I wish the event all the success. Thank you. Wish you all a wonderful evening. Next, we have a special address. May I please invite Mr. V. Krishnamurthy, Vice President of HSIL, to deliver a special address. Very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am sure most of you are sitting here are familiar with Brand Hindware. What I will be talking about are things which some of you would not know in terms of how different we are as a brand in terms of catering to the needs of the developers. Apart from our brand Hindware, we have two more brands. One for the value for segment segment, which is known as the Benlawe brand, which is more for the value for money segment, and other for the premium and the luxury end of the market, which is our Kyo brand. Within the Hindware brand, we have three segments, which is the Hindware, the Hindware art, and the Hindu Italian collection. The Hindu Italian collection primarily meets your demand when you are doing premium housing. So some of the premium projects is where we clearly pitch in Kyo. So when you are looking at some premium project, we have Kyo. Then we have the Inter Italian collection, the Hindware art, Hindware. And those who are really looking at affordable housing, we have the brand Ben Lawe. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now be moving on to our first panel discussion. The topic is future of the built environment, high, smart or mixed. You all know that we are going through a bad patch as far as economic stability is concerned, which is affecting all the countries, all over the world. So it affects all, uh, not only real, real estate, every aspect of life in our our, our country or our state which we are living. So it means, what does it mean? It means that we have to innovate ourselves. Uh, innovate ourselves to uh, face the situation. No point in uh, blaming the future that we won't be able to do good. So we have to plan for it. So it calls for a lot of innovation. We have to also depend on uh, affordability. As I'm not touching all the details of the subject because we have other four panel members who are going to discuss all this. So I uh, leave it to the first speaker, Najib. Real estate is basically driven by sentiments and fundamentals. Sentiments sometimes overtake fundamentals. And that's why you get a lot of bad press when sentiments go bad. Sentiments create confusion, uncertainty, fear, and that leads to nervousness. Nervousness leads to indecision, and buying decision is postponed or delayed. Whereas fundamentals are, what is the city infrastructure? What are the services available? Is there social infrastructure available? Take back 10 years and look back now. Real estate is poised for the next fine growth over the next. This year, you're going to see six months going to be, you know, with uncertainty, with all this China devaluation, currency devaluation, oil prices hitting. But there are some strong fundamentals in our markets. And that fundamental, with, with, of course, with urbanization, with the nuclear families, there is continuous requirement. So these delayed fence sitters are going to come back. They have always postponed their decisions. We have seen decisions taken six months after an inquiry. So these things happen. So we just have to be uh, stick to the thing. Most important thing is delivery. So uh, timely delivery with adhered quality, promised quality to be adhered. If that is done, and uh, I don't think we need to go enormously beyond. Innovation happens. It has to happen. There is water efficiency requirement, there is energy efficiency requirement, there is waste management requirements, all have to be met. Unfortunately, the public sector is, or the government is far behind in all this. So private sectors are the ones who are pushing it through and of course government is catching up. Services are just catching up. So we have a lot of investment uh, as far as smart city investments are concerned that is going to come through. 
when that money comes, that will help improve all the pending infrastructure, the flyovers, the four lanes, the dividers in the roads, the fundamentals, the basics. Of course, the metro is taking off. Then if we get a memo train, then what is going to happen, this is also connected. Commuting distance becomes shorter. In that way, people will prefer to live in the metros. Or alternatively, there will be people who prefer to live in their own, you know, towns, so that they can come and work and go back also. But the other, there's another concept of live and work in the same complex. So there are combinations and permutations which will happen, and uh, that will be the way forward. Thank you, uh, Najib. Now let me hear uh, something from Sandeep from Industry Park. I think, uh, you know, there is no question that uh, it has to be a mix of both, whether you go up or you go smart, uh, you know, it, technology will play a very, very important role in all new building design. I've always believed that our planners have never worked in sync with our builders, with our developers. Uh, the planners work in isolation of everyone else, broadly without any great inputs that they seek from the people who are really concerned. And I think our civic planning in general in India is quite poor and it does not take care of five years, ten years later concerns. They deal with today's problems. By the time they implement a solution, the solution is already much bigger than what the problem was. So they should be actually planning much ahead and implementing the projects much quicker. We have to use our uh, you know, resources economically and also we have to look at our ecology. I mean, you guys are blessed in Kerala that your environment is very good. If you ever come to Delhi, you walk few kilometers on the road, you start coughing that you have to go to the doctor next day. It's the world's most polluted city, Delhi. So I think it's a very serious matter. And there are cars stuck on the national highway for one, one, one and a half hours all spewing our exhaust. So I think our basic system is flawed. We have to make sure that congestion does not occur in the way that it occurs in some of the bigger cities. Even Bangalore, I'm told, is quite bad in terms of traffic. So I think the planners have to work more efficiently. Materials will always support. I think the materials are very good. Material technology is evolving usually. Where there is a, you know, where there is a use for a material, if the material doesn't exist, it will be invented. There are enough good companies, good technologists, good scientists in the world, and we will invent the material. That is not a problem. Problem is people must be willing to use new materials which I think broadly in India the acceptance is gaining now. I don't see much resistance towards new material provided you can convince the architects that this is the material and this is the purpose it serves. I think most architects are quite receptive to new ideas today. Now I'd like uh, to uh, uh, Mr. Sudhir to just come in as an architect, colleague. I'm touching upon uh, responsibility factor in uh, building industry. Everybody is now changing into a kind of money-making process in the event of economic uh, uh, insecure planning. Uh, a developer can always change into, I mean, why should I get into unnecessary troubles? An architect can also get into a, a system wherein, why should I unnecessary innovate? Because uh, uh, there is no policy around me. Uh, is there a place wherein, we are talking about green cities, we are talking about urban forests, is there a place where we can have an urban forest? No. So why we are not having it? Because we always blame it why government is not planning it. But what are we contributing towards that? Of course, the developers within their 40 cents of one acre land, they will do that. But what is happening just the side of the, uh, the property where the person staying, I mean, he is just staying in the same village uh, premises where uh, I mean, we can see the development is going now towards the villages. The cities are crowded. Global factors like rubber prices going down, and the oil prices going down, economic crisis, all these problems are poising out to a point where what are we heading to? What is our responsibility as planners, architects, I mean, I just being an architect, sensible architect uh, to look at. What are we trying to build higher, build taller, or build smarter? Uh, this is a question which I would like to uh, share. Builders, architects, and all policy makers and economic power centers have to come together and tell the government we have to have our own body wherein we have to work as one single forum like uh, the, um, uh, the Chamber of Commerce. We should form a uh, forum and tell the government this is what we want, please work for us because we are voting them to the power. Uh, thank you, Sudhir. Uh, now I will ask uh, Mr. Bagis to go ahead. Today's point of discussion was the future of big environment 
whether it should be high, smart, or mixed. When you look at this from the perspective of Kerala, the state where we live, you find the availability of land a major, major problem for a builder. The builder's primary objective is to build. He needs the raw material of land. And the availability of land in Kerala is a big, big issue. We have only about one-third of land available for construction. There again, with the numerous rules and restrictions, with the numerous regulations, going for high-rise has become a difficult thing. But personally, I feel that this is our only opportunity. Where land is less, we can only go vertical. But here what is required is a need-based design is required. When the global economy takes a turmoil, when there is a slide in the market, the demand for housing is not coming down. What is coming, what is affecting is the purchase power of the person is getting affected. So here is where the architects and designers can play a very pivotal role. We should be able to come out with the designs with comfortable ticket size for the customer to buy, with amenities and facilities conducive for his lifestyle. In such a situation, we need to design an apartment or a dwelling place comfortable for the buyer to buy. When the investment goes up, the investment on a house goes up, what happens is the investor segment go away from the sector because the return on investment doesn't justify. So what we have left in Kerala is the end user of housing. And for that end user, the designer has to come out with the designs conducive to the situation. What we need is a market-driven product, not a product-driven market. We, are, we, are, we cannot sell any more a product in a product-driven situation. We cannot sell. We need to design something which is required for the market, which is acceptable to the market for its expectations and suitable for its pocket. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bogus. Thank you very much. It's a good, uh, all the panelists have done a good job. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now moving into a felicitation ceremony. Through this ceremony, the Economic Times will be honoring the real estate organizations in Kochi who have made a difference in the real estate sector in Kochi. Today, we invite our guest of honor for the event, Mr. Hai Beden, MLA, Cochin Legislative Assembly, to do the honors to the real estate organizations in the city of Kochi. May I also invite onto the stage Mr. Sandeep Somani, JMD HSIL, and Rishi Kapoor, Sector Head, TCL, BCCL, onto the stage for the felicitation ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, the following are the organizations that we felicitated today. We start with Abad Builders. Our next is Asset Homes. Our next is Noel Projects. Our next is Kyline Foundations and Structures. The final is Skyline Builders. On this evening, our heartfelt gratitude goes out to Mr. Hai B. Eden to be present here on this evening. Thank you so much, sir, for being a part of this August audience. Thank you so much.
And thank you, Mr. Sandeep Somani, and thank you, Mr. Rashid Kapoor. Ladies and gentlemen, we would also like to thank all our delegates and speakers for participating. Special thanks goes out to the title partner, Hindware, our cement partner, JSW Cement, and knowledge partner, KPMG India. Thank you so much, audience, for being very patient, and thank you all for coming, and have a beautiful evening. Thank you. The government at the center is currently in that phase where they are trying to strengthen the infrastructure in the country because that is essentially the base to the development of the country. So I think Mr. Modi in that way has clearly realized that it is infrastructure which needs to be given utmost importance and that is where you know you are seeing a lot of these new ports, highways, airports, uh, SEZs, uh, smart cities which are coming up in a big way. So I think it's a good time for the industry. If you read the business papers every day, you definitely find that uh, business is not uh, really booming. But then with a country of 1.3 billion population, things just can't be like that. Internal requirement itself is so high. You the only problem what the builders have done is all have been targeted, targeting apartments on the high-end segment. See, that means any builder, if he says, I'm a builder of some repute, he feels he should build in the 2,000 to 5,000 square feet uh, apartments for which the absorption is low, the price is ridiculously high, the amenity, everything is overpriced. The whole thing is actually there is a deal for the buyer, but you know you don't have that kind of number of people trying to buy this kind. Whereas we are trying the 500 to 1000 square feet, definitely we can sell in millions like what the uh, government of India is saying, you can sell in millions. But then we are not able to get the land at that price. Land it seems to be, according to me, the single biggest issue in trying to build uh, houses for the masses. It has to be good times, it has to be exciting times, but people will have to reorient the business to what the people can afford to buy. So that is my thing, we have to, the builder has to reorient himself. I think there are a couple of things, uh, you know, which uh, definitely affects the, the, the progress or the, the development of the construction industry or growth of the construction industry. One is the approval system, uh, which uh, requires to be uh, uh, probably, you know, uh, a single window system uh, where you have, you know, very transparent rules and regulations, you know, with which you can get to all your approvals in a, you know, in a, in a time-bound manner. Now, uh, land is a very expensive uh, stuff, you know, and uh, naturally the cost of time is pretty high. So that will bring down the cost of the real estate product uh, per se, you know, much lower. The second aspect is the, the tax component, which is about, you know, 20, 22 uh, percent, you know, depending on the stamp uh, duty, the sort of service tax component, your VAT, you know, all these things put together. GST might bring in a, you know, uh, a difference to the entire system. So if, if you bring down the, you know, tax structure and also the, the, the time of, you know, getting an approval, or if you introduce a, you know, single window uh, clearance system, I think, you know, things would improve substantially and the cost would also come down. The real estate industry in India has a tremendous opportunity, but we need to understand the, the varying dynamics of what is happening to the country at a macro level as, as well as as a micro level. Uh, India is going through a surge of growth, uh, clogging something like 7 to 7.5%, 7 which they expect to maintain for the next maybe 10 or 15, 20 years. Uh, poised to be the third largest economy by 2050, India has a larger growth plan, not only in the cities, but also where uh, uh, industries are going to be established, uh, infrastructure projects are going to come. So real estate has to be more distributed in the sense it has to come off from that its fixation into cities, from metros, into those areas where growth is uh, being uh, planned. So once, the, once that kind of a redistribution happens, it's more of a balanced ecosystem wherein the offerings of a built space are going to be much in sort. ED Reality is an excellent forum to bring uh, you know, the people who hold the knowledge, the architects, the people who use the knowledge, which is builders and people who design the product, which is the industry together, and understand and discuss the challenges that we face as an industry. You know, some of the interesting discussions we have on kind of need of innovation, need of how do we look at the future smart cities and how do we look at the need of developing products and services to ensure the consumers of tomorrow are well serviced and sustainable. Uh, so these kind of forums uh, give an excellent platform. I was very happy with the kind of discussions we've had uh, in a couple of forums that you've already done this year and we see this as a strong platform which should be sort of built up for taking this initiative forward.